Perfect. And I was just blown away that I was the chosen winner of the first challenge of the comeback for Quirky. Uh, so I'm honored and I'm still pinching myself. This is just it's, this is the part of the roller coaster where I'm going up, and I'm really, really, really happy right now. This is just exciting. Welcome to the Invention Stories Podcast, where we share stories of inventors who turn their idea into a product. Please visit our website at www.inventionstories.com. And now, from the Invention Stories Podcast World Headquarters Studios in Morro Bay, California, is our host, Robert Baer. Welcome to the Invention Stories Podcast, brought to you by the Socket Saver. My name is Robert Baer, and thank you for joining us. Do you have loose wall sockets? The Socket Saver is a safe, easy, and effective solution. More information can be found at www.socketsaver.com. You're listening to episode 33 of the Invention Stories Podcast, Debbie Schwartz, the Quirky Plush Toy Challenge, and Toon Zoo. Welcome, Debbie, to the Invention Stories Podcast. It's great to have you with us. What kind of kid were you? Were you, were you an inventor as a kid? Did you like to tinker? Were you, what kind of kid were you? I think I was always the, the kind of child who was thinking outside the box, even at a very early age. I used the word quirky, and I was quirky. I would look at things and wonder why can't it work a different way? What other uses can we do with this object? Even at a very early age, I would have boxes and I'd make, I would cut out holes and think about what these boxes could be used for and put little little animals in there, little hamsters and things like that and try to make things for them to work out in. And I was always thinking another step, not just what something looked at, what else it could be used for. Did you have a pretty active imagination then? I, <laughs> yes, I've been accused of that. A very active imagination, but I think that's a good thing. I, I do too. Uh, uh, let me ask you, did you have any, uh, any family members who were inventors? Did you know any inventors growing up? No, I didn't have any family members that were inventors. Okay. But my parents always encouraged storytelling and, you know, being um, imaginative. They were imaginative people as well, so it all fit. Okay. I see that you're a special education needs teacher. Uh, yeah. Did you know that that's what you wanted to be when you were young? I or? think so. I always loved children. I I always felt that I wanted to do something in my career that involved children. And so it was a natural inclination for me to go into the teaching career. I was an exceptional ed teacher for a very long time. I worked with students from minor learning disabilities to profound autism and everything in between. And I really, really loved teaching. I got a lot out of it. And I hope that I made a difference for some children. Uh, that's that's really cool. I uh... I must imagine you must have had a have a tremendous amount of patience, but uh, every day must have been different, huh? Every day was different. Every year when you would get a new class, it was always different, and different challenges and different rewards. And I really enjoyed. I enjoyed the journey. I feel like my students taught me as much as I. I think I taught them. I I learned a lot about patience, about kindness, about taking your time. And always about thinking outside the box, because a lot of my special needs kids, you couldn't teach them the same way. You had to, you know, find tricks and different gimmicks and, and different ways to, to reach into their minds and expound on that. Yeah, thinking outside the box, that's, uh, I get uh, accused of thinking too much outside the box. But uh, <laughs> let me ask you, uh, you went to Florida State University. Uh, why did you choose uh, Florida State to go to? Well, it, it was a very, very good school. Um, at the time, I'm sure it still is. Go Knowles. I wanted really to go out of the state of Florida, but my, my dad wanted me to stay in the state of Florida. So that was pretty much the, um, you know, as far as I can go to Tallahassee from Miami. So it was fun. It was great. I really enjoyed it. Great school. Were you a good student? Did uh, learning come easy to you? I was a, a very good student. I always like to listen. I have a hearing disability, and I think that that always made me want to listen more intently. 
So I was always in the front of the class and I would ask questions if I didn't think I heard something correctly. I attended a lot. So I, I was a good school. So, yeah. Can I toot my own horn? I was always on, on the dean's list and, and I tried to excel. Right on. Uh, no, nah, I, uh, I, I was usually in the front row because they did a lot of times. They did an alphabetical order and bears pretty early, but uh, <laughs> S is pretty far back there. But uh, tell me how you how you found Quirky and. Uh... Oh, I remember that day. There was a commercial on TV, and they talked about Quirky and about that they, they try to make invention accessible. And I looked at my husband and I said, oh, my God, that's for me. Because I'm always inventing things in the house, putting things together or making toys or games for my students. So I ran to the computer. I went on Quirky and it was love at first sight. Love at first sight. I I didn't do a a particularly good job at my early inventions, but um, I enjoyed it. And I enjoyed meeting people and learning through trial and error and it's just been wonderful, wonderful ride for me. Say somebody came up to you like a friend or, you know, somebody you meet and, and they asked you, uh, you know, they maybe they told you they had an invention and they, you know, they'd heard about this website, Quirky. What would you tell them? I mean, how would you, do, how would you describe Quirky to them? I would describe Quirky as a, an eye-opening, um, innovative world that you need a lot of patience and dedication if you're a serious inventor, um, not to give up, to focus, clarity, that it just will open up your, you know, a whole world to, you know, imagination and innovation and creativeness. If that's your drive, this is the place to go. Quirky affords you the ability to work with other people to help you on your areas that you're not as strong. And it's a roller coaster, but it's a great roller coaster. I've actually started to uh, work on my uh, first invention on the Quirky platform there, and uh, hey, you know that's the great. <laughs> yeah, you know I've always had this idea for a long time, and I just I've never really did anything with it. I've had other ideas that I've worked through the patent process, but I had one, and I thought you know I'm going to try this Quirky out, and I'm I'm in the first step. I haven't made it public yet because I'm. Still kind of fleshing out the idea, but it seems like there's like a five-step process to it, and it really seems to be broke down, and it looks like you can uh, you get help or you can ask for help in, in different stages. Is that how it works? Well, if you're, you're starting it in a private mode, I'm, I'm gathering. And by the way, congratulations to you. Thank you. Coming a quirkster. Yeah, you can reach out if you can send, if you're starting in the private and you need help, you could reach out there's a part on the submission form for you to put in certain members' names and ask them to help you and come in on it. Or if you need a lot of help and you don't know who to ask, you can change it to the public sector and then a lot of people will help you. You have to put a certain percentage of influence for different areas that you need help in and people will offer their suggestions on your submission form and you can choose to take them or not if they're, you know, if they're good suggestions. I look forward to doing that. Let me get right to it. You know, the reason that I'm calling you is Quirky's back. And, yeah! <laughs> you know, I, uh, I, when I first learned of Quirky and Ben Kaufman and what he had created, watched the television show, I thought it was unbelievable. And, and it really seemed like a juggernaut. And then, uh, yes. the next thing I know, it, they're closing up shop and, uh, they went bankrupt. It seems like this was a real community of, people trying to invent together and how did that uh how did it make you feel when you heard or or, you know how did that affect you when you learned that uh they were going into bankruptcy devastating it was devastating for a lot of people because you know you you sort of form a like a cyber family and you all become very close because we're like-minded people and Ben Kaufman was you know is a hero to me still is I I think his vision is, is is just grand and it has inspired so many people so when it went under it yeah it was just devastating there was a I had a lot of ideas uh, already submitted I had one idea that was chosen that was going to be made so personally it just it just really was um, upsetting on so many levels but the strange thing was they kept the site going where you could still submit so during the bankruptcy we kept holding out that 
you know, somebody grand was going to come along and buy the, uh, the site and keep it going. And that's what happened. Q Holdings bought it. And we have this incredible group running Quirky. They have kept the dream. It never stopped. It absolutely never stopped. We have diehard inventors on there that just didn't give up. And we're still here. <laughs> yeah, I... Uh, I- I, I got to agree with you. I uh, I interviewed Gina Waldorn, who's the president now of Quirky, and we're going to be uh, sharing that podcast episode uh, January 1st. And um, I just was dazzled by how brilliant she was or, or yeah. is. Yeah. I, yeah. I didn't. I just asked her questions and I'm just like listening to her going, wow, you are so smart. Um, she is so smart and she has this energy that, you know, you just it's infectious and, you know, be even more creative. Um, oh, she is a godsend to all of us. Absolute. We're so happy to have her there. And now it's time for a commercial break. The Invention Stories podcast is brought to you by the Socket Saver. Do the plugs fall out of your wall sockets? The Socket Saver is an easy, safe, and effective solution. No repairs necessary, no circuit breakers involved, no electrical knowledge or mechanical skills required. Socket Savers are inexpensive, efficient, and portable. For more information, please visit www.socketsaver.com. So let's get to it. You started off with an idea for, I guess, what was first called Tiger Tunes and has now been changed to... Tunzu. Tunzu. Okay. Yeah. How did that come about? Was that uh, was that something that was offered during the um, during the bankruptcy, or is it after they come back? After they came back, their first they had a challenge. They became partners with a, a toy company, DGL, and they had a toy challenge. That, and they gave us some parameters of what to focus on when we were to come up with an idea. And it was supposed to be a plush toy with sensors, and that's it. So there, I think there were several, uh, over 100 submissions of people creating a certain type of toy that had touch sensors. And I, I did signed this tiger that you touch and it plays music and reacts to sensors. And I was just blown away that I was the chosen winner of the first challenge of the comeback for Quirky. Uh, so I'm honored and I'm still pinching myself. This is just it's, this is the part of the roller coaster where I'm going up, and I'm really, really, really happy right now. This is just exciting. They changed the name at West Tiger Tunes to uh, Tune Zoo because they decided to bring out not just one animal, uh, three animals. It's um, a tiger, a panda, and a monkey that you could choose from. So you can imagine my elation <laughs> that it's uh, that it morphed into something like this. So, and it's um, I think it's it's just coming to market and it will be available in the quirky store very very soon okay so it's not available as we speak it's available on qvc okay and yes but we're hoping that it will get to the quirky store very very soon all right fingers crossed well let me uh, let me uh, kind of go back a little bit when exactly was the first when did you learn of this challenge when was this challenge was it uh, earlier this year it was a few months ago. Yeah, a few. I, I don't remember the exact month, but it was at least three months ago, at least. Wow, so all this happened in like three months? It happened at least three months. It may have been four months ago. I have to go back and look. Oh, yeah, the first challenge, and we had about a month of submissions. And a couple of weeks later, after they closed the submissions, I heard. And uh, they told me I was the winner. And, I mean... This was my dream, you know, to actually get something to market. And it happened. If it happened to me, it can happen to it can happen to you. Yeah, that's so inspiring. From an i yeah. from from an idea responding to a challenge to actually having a product that can people can buy in just a few months yeah. with yeah. with and how much money have you have you paid out of your pocket? Hardly anything. It doesn't cost anything to um, submit ideas for quirky at all. If you, you know, spend any money, that's a personal decision if you want to make a prototype, but it's not a requirement. Um, so it's, it's, re- it's a free, it's a free uh, site for you to collaborate with people all over the world. And, um, you're, you know, you have a chance of making your dream come true. No, that's so awesome. I mean, that's like the dream of most inventors is right. to have a, have something come to market and then 
Like you hear of people going broke, going bankrupt, uh, losing right. every, losing their houses, winding up uh, homeless. And here you just uh, said, you know what? Here's my idea, and you didn't have to pay yeah. anything. And here we are, a couple months later, and wow, I, I can't imagine how many you're gonna sell or how many's oh, gonna please. be sold I by uh, <laughs> by Christmas or uh, you know. That's but right. okay, uh, so you started off with a with a tiger and. You just uh, started writing up your idea by yourself, and then uh, when did you start to uh, like solicit help for it? Was it for the drawings part, or? I yes, I collaborated with my I, I partner frequently with a lady named Paulette Blankenship, and she is fantastic, and she helped me with the renders and the sketches, and um, we partner in a lot of things, and she helped out, so I got to give kudos and a shout out to her too. Okay, so you, you got some help in making the draw. Uh, what exactly was the total process from your submission to acceptance or to be a winner? I went through the five-point check system with the features and the inspiration and the sketches and the renders and a video pitch. You have five things, five criteria to fulfill to submit an idea. And... Within each section, like for features, we had about 15 features. Inspiration, we selected pictures that represent why we are going in that direction. Then the sketch of what my idea is. And then a render is that we did a 3D render. It's sort of a, um, it gives a, a jewel of all the different views of the, of the sketch. And then we did a, a video presentation of the idea, like a one-minute video, a very quick video. And then we submitted it, and we just, you know, sit back and wait and hope. And you can continue to submit other ideas while you're waiting. It's not limited to one idea. You can do other ideas, and I did. I submitted a few. And that's the process, and it took about four weeks to hear back. Okay, and uh, so like for the video, for example, did you... I think that photos and videos are truly important because if if something has bad lighting or if it's kind of unpackaged, you know, it can kind of get lost if you're babbling or or whatever. But how did you do the video part of it? Did you do it yourself with your cell phone or how did that, how, how, how was the video done? Well, some, at this time right now, they're not requiring you to do a professional video or sometimes I do YouTube videos where I just, submit my pictures and I talk in the background and and upload it, which is very, very easy. If I can figure that out, anybody can. Or at this time, you could select YouTube videos that are relevant to your idea. They're allowing that right now. I think that's going to change. But right now, so for instance, for um, some of my animal ideas, I selected YouTube videos about that animal and they'll accept that at this time. But sometimes I do more professional videos, depending on how difficult the subject is to convey or if I need to convey something specific. But the videos are so easy. Nobody needs to get nervous about that. You could just write up a little script and in one minute show some pictures and talk in the background. Okay. And so when they told you that you'd won, did they have any sort of ceremony where you went up to New York City and uh, signed on the (laughs) dotted line or did they just... FedEx it to well, you and well, walk you all, through it? Backtrack. When they told me I won, I screamed so loud, they probably did hear me in New York City from Fort Lauderdale. I was so excited. I, I, I started to shake. I was just, I, I was just, you know, like having an out-of-body experience. You know, they didn't have me come to New York. You know, they've asked me if I'm ever by there to come by. They promoted it on Facebook. They asked me about my different social media accounts so I can put it on social media. And it's just, it's been all over the forums. They, they brought it to QVC. It's been on QVC. So it's, uh, it's, been, it's been a good fanfare. Yeah, I guess it has been. I, I just can only imagine what it'd be like. It seems like a dream to come true. It really it does. Is, it is. All right. So uh, do you expect to do any sort of more promotional things uh, in the coming months? Or do you think that's just remains to be seen? Or um, I think they're going to, they're putting together some type of marketing packet that is going to allow the inventor to market their ideas even more. I'm not familiar with what it is yet. I think they're still developing it to help you as the inventor sell your own products even more. But they've been doing it all so far. But I'm waiting to find out more. 
Okay, so Tunzu can be purchased on the uh, on the Quirky website and on QVC. That's correct. Right. Okay. Right. Soon to be on Quirky website. Soon. Yes. I guess that's just about all I've got for you. I I did want to ask one last question. Uh, sure. If uh, somebody came up to you with an idea for an invention, what advice would you give them? Believe in yourself and and just go forward. You have nothing to lose, only everything to gain. And would you recommend Quirky to him? And go Quirky. <laughs> Let me finish that. <laughs> that, was, that was what's called a pregnant pause. And go Quirky, yes. Get on the Quirky site and let magic happen. You've been listening to episode 33 of the Invention Stories podcast, Debbie Schwartz, the Quirky Plush Toy Challenge, and Toon Zoo. I want to thank Debbie Schwartz for being our guest today. More information can be found at www.quirky.com. The Invention Stories podcast has been sponsored by The Socket Saver. Does the plug fall out of your wall socket while vacuuming, drying your hair, using a power tool, or recharging your electronic devices? The Socket Saver is an easy, safe, and effective solution. Please visit www.socketsaver.com. If you've been thinking about podcasting yourself, I say go for it, and when you do, Drop us a line and we'll give you a shout out on the show. You know, you don't have to have a series. You could just produce one or however many you like. All you need is a computer and you can download free Audacity software. The only thing you need to buy is the microphone. And what we use and recommend is the ATR2100 by Audio-Technica. I think it sounds great and it's about $70. If you would like to purchase it while supporting the Invention Stories podcast, please go to www.inventionstories.com forward slash ATR. Thank you very much for listening today and please tell a friend.